For the past few months, I've been building up a brand new setup in my free time. It took a lot longer than I was anticipating, and when I thought I was done, something popped up in my inbox, or I encountered an issue with something like cable management, or certain items not working as anticipated. But I'm finally proud to show off my brand new desk setup. Hi, I'm Chris, thank you for stopping by. The whole process of this new desk was to declutter, remove as many distractions as I can, and fix a fair few issues I have encountered over the years of sitting at my desk. These issues were a cramped workspace, excess heat given off by laptops and computers, the cable management, and strangely enough, I haven't used speakers in a long time, so several upgrades were needed. To start addressing these issues, I decided to create two parts to this setup. The standing desk with the IKEA Carby worktop, and an IKEA shelving unit that would house all the parts to my setup that I did not need within arm's reach. So let's start with the desk. I'm using the FlexiSpot E7B standing desk frame that was kindly sent to me by FlexiSpot for another desk setup video. I took the white top it came with and switched it out with my IKEA Carby worktop. Since my last main setup video, I've actually cut this worktop down to 160 centimeters. The reason being is that where I'm currently living, the room's decoration isn't to my taste, and there is a strange cut off on the wallpaper. Unfortunately, I can't redecorate, so I cut the desk down to match this change in look, and it perfectly fits with the shelf to create a nice contrast. Like a lot of creators out there, I've purchased a desk shelf to complement the Carby worktop. This shelf gave me more options for storage and a place to slide my keyboard under when I wanted to use my iPad for note taking or anything along those lines. But right before I planned to make this video, Grovemade reached out to me and asked if I would like to try out some of their products. I quickly said yes, as their products are rather expensive, and I personally would be hesitant to buy them myself. But having received them, I can say the quality is excellent. The desk shelf has a divider which I place their accessory tray, which I use to store various knickknacks I use from time to time. And I populate the middle shelf with hard drives, my gaming mouse when it's not in use, cables I regularly need, and the CalDigit TS4 Thunderbolt dock. The TS4 is a very new addition to the desk which I wasn't planning on upgrading to from my previous OWC Thunderbolt hub. But, like I mentioned in the start of this video, CalDigit popped into my inbox and asked if I'd like to try out their TS4 with no obligation to create any content on it. They simply said we'd love for you to try it and we don't expect anything in return. Now that was incredibly kind of them, and I'm happy to say that I feel obliged to give my honest opinion of this product. It's awesome, it is by far the most versatile Thunderbolt dock that I've tried in a long time. Some important things to note are both an SD and micro SD card slot, multiple USB-C ports, and the ever most important rear-facing host port. It fits absolutely perfect on my Grovemade shelf, and it is expensive, but it's quite possibly the best Thunderbolt 4 dock on the market right now. Connected to the hub via a USB-C to HDMI cable is the LG UltraGear GP95R. It has a 4K 144Hz panel that supports HDR and it gets incredibly bright. This is actually my second monitor, so a word of caution if you decide to buy this, be very careful. Don't stick your thumb through the monitor like I did. You may have to claim on your insurance or buy a new one if you do. The monitor is sitting on a cheap Amazon table mounted arm and on top of that monitor is the BenQ screen bar. I have used this for years and it is still going strong and works just as good as the day I received it. No desk would be complete without accessories, so let's start with my keyboard. I use the EpoMaker EK68 mechanical keyboard, which I've had for a while now. It's a great keyboard on a budget, it's solid, but I am looking to potentially upgrade this in the future. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments, as I would like to upgrade this at some point. I primarily use the Logitech MX Master 3S when working. Its ergonomic design and shape really takes away a lot of strain from working at my desk for hours on end. However, I do couple this with my Delta Hub Carpio wrist rest for those times when my arm starts to ache. It helps alleviate a lot of the pain associated with carpal tunnel, which I do suffer from slightly. When it comes to gaming, I use a Logitech G502X Lightspeed mouse. It's great, there's almost zero latency, and the battery life lasts a good week or two of continuous use. There's also the option to customize the buttons and the onboard RGB. These all sit on top of a black desk pad from Grovemade. I was a bit cautious to use this at first because I like to game at my PC and anyone knows that a decent mouse mat does affect your gaming. 
I found the desk mat to be great with my Logitech gaming mouse, and the best part I found is that if I ever find myself eating at my desk and I accidentally spill something, it wipes off incredibly easy and it leaves no stains. It looks almost identical to the day I received it. Next up is speakers. I've spent a lot of the past two or three years using headphones or wireless earbuds exclusively when gaming or working at my Mac. However, over time I've started to use my MacBook Pro's inbuilt speakers when I want to just sit back and enjoy some content. Obviously, if you use it in clamshell mode, the sound is affected. It was because of this change in sound that I decided to go out and finally buy a decent set of desktop speakers. I settled on the Kanto YU2 speakers with their matching speaker stands. I've seen these on a lot of desk setups and they do garner some pretty good reviews. In my opinion though, at first I wasn't overly impressed by the sound, but once you crank the volume up to around 30 to 60%, the listening experience does improve. There isn't much bass, but that isn't a huge deal for me. But one thing I have noticed is that the speakers are far louder when I play content through my PC compared to my MacBook Pro. And off to the left of my desk, I have my Benx MagSafe 2-in-1 charger. I don't usually need to charge my phone at my desk, but when I do, I simply pop it on here and it's out of the way so I'm not distracted. Now before I tell you about a few little things I have scattered around the desk, I need to tell you about what's on the storage shelves and how I've gone about moving everything from my desk to my shelf. First up is my 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. I've raved all about this when I first got it and for good reason. It blows away everything that I had before it and it is still far more powerful and capable than I could need. It's sporting one terabyte of storage and 32 gigabytes of RAM with the M1 Max chip. And this sits in possibly my favorite item that Grove made kindly sent out to me, and that is their laptop dock. It's well built, stylish, and the cubby that the MacBook sits in is sturdy and felt lined, which helps protect my MacBook every time I put it in and out. It looks great on the shelf, and the design helps it hide what's stored behind. Behind is my OWC Mercury Pro U.2. This is a Thunderbolt 4 backup solution I use for YouTube projects, and it is blazing fast. I can transfer 100 gigabytes to and from my Mac in less than a minute. It takes up little space on the shelf, and it even allows me to daisy chain my Envoy Pro FX hard drive for even more storage. Sitting on top of that is a Philips Hue Play Bar, which I use to accent the shelf and add a pop of color at night. To the left is a collection of books I've read over the years, and below the shelf is a couple of storage boxes which I keep spare cables, camera gear when it's not in use, and odd bits and pieces that do not fit into drawers. On top I have my gaming PC which doesn't get updated very often, and by today's standards it is pretty dated. With a 6700K processor and an RTX 3090, the CPU really lets this PC down. But right now I can't justify any costs on this machine as it still performs pretty well in most modern titles and the games I regularly play. Next to that is an IKEA bowl light which I use with a Philips Hue Edison bulb that is connected to a smart plug. I do it like this so I can have control over both the light and the bulb individually, which also helps with my home kit routines I have set up. Throw in a few fake plants and it brings it all together. But how does this all connect to the desk? I've spent a very long time working out this system and spent far more money on cabling than I dare to admit. Firstly, the MacBook Pro is linked to the CalDigit TS4 with one 3 meter Apple Thunderbolt 4 cable. Yes, that is the stupidly expensive cable on their website, but fortunately I picked it up for an absolute steal. The cable is way too expensive, but I've had a lot less issues with this one than I did with the OWC cable that came with my previous Thunderbolt 4 hub. It also charges my MacBook Pro as the CalDigit TS4 provides up to 100 watts of power to any laptop or MacBook. The PC is connected to my monitor with a 5 meter DisplayPort 1.4 cable. The power cable is also 3 meters, and to connect all my accessories there is a 5 meter USB extension lead which is plugged into a USB hub mounted to the underside of my table. This hub is then connected to my keyboard, my Logitech receiver, the Logitech headphones which hang under the desk, and my favorite part, the USB switch which is connected to both my Mac and my PC. This switch allows me with the click of a button to switch my Kanto speakers from my PC to my Mac without having to get up, disconnect a cable and plug it in again. It's a simple but really handy feature to the desk which keeps everything clean and tidy. Cable managing all of this was an absolute nightmare and it still isn't perfect. One of the issues with a standing desk is obviously managing cables when it's in a sitting and standing position. I needed enough slack in all of the cables to account for this 
as well as trying to make it look clean and tidy. It took a while, but I did get there in the end, and using a combination of cable ties, cable guides, and sleeving, I've mounted cables up and down the support beams of the shelving unit, along with the bottom of my desk. When you're sat down, you can't see a thing, and from a distance, there's only two cables to the left leg, which feed over to the computers. And finally completing this whole setup are a Philips Hue gradient strip on the back of my desk, two Hue light bars attached to the back of the monitor, which gives me a nice amount of bias lighting to help reduce eye strain. There's another fake plant, and of course, the best chair of all, the Herman Miller Aeron. So thank you so much for watching this video on my new desk setup. I'll leave links to absolutely everything featured in the description of this video, along with any other little things I may have missed. There will also be a unique link to Grovemade where you can save 5% off your purchase if you're a new customer, and any clicks to any links below will help this channel greatly. So if you do decide to purchase anything using these links, I'd be very grateful, and you have my thanks. Thank you again, and see you next time. Take care.